I managed to find the screech owl. It's super tiny. And what's unique is it's in a red morph. Most screech owls are gray. And this little girl, female, is in a little crook in a tree and she's sitting on a nest. And I'm crossing my fingers that, you know, she'll have eggs and we'll be able to come back and get the little teeny tiny screechers. I've got the camera balanced. Ninja's rolling, recording. We're using the R5, it's on. So normally when I'm walking to a scene, I'm in aperture priority and I'm in auto ISO, just in case I see anything. And I know I'm gonna be photographing up towards the bright sky. So I've got it plus two thirds, just as a default. Now let's go over here, make sure I've got full, no cropping, excellent. Electronic first cut curtain, right? I could do that, but I'm gonna go full electronic. Don't need that. Make sure the subject to detect is animals. Awesome, we're very good with that. I go over here, date, good. My white balance is cloudy because it is cloudy. That's roughly about 7,000 degrees Kelvin. All right, we're all good to go. So let's pop over here, live view. All right, and I'm gonna try and find my little owl. And I messed up my camera here. The aiming, ah, here we go. And I've used a single focus point for now because um, I have to shoot through some trees, right? So I want to make sure that, oh, there we go. There she is, right there, right? So now it's a question of composition. Okay, we're going to move the focus more right on to her. Now let's go through a few things. Right, we're going to lock down the camera on the gimbal and on the tripod. Okay, that's good. Kind of like that composition. It's still a little bit center center for me. So what we're going to do is just going to pan the head slightly, get her off in the right lower third. So I'll turn my head, excellent, right there. Now, this is in aperture priority, wide open 5.6 plus two thirds. Now we're going to check the histogram because I don't always trust what I see in the LCD screen, but with mirrorless, it's a good indicator of your exposure and color. So I'm just going to bring up the info. There we go. Look at that. RGB values are all near equal in length. By them being all near equal in length, we know we have pretty neutral color, right? So if I change any of those white balances, let me go back over to the info. There we go. And we're going to change the white balance. And we're going to go auto and see what happens. So we're going to auto white balance and we're on white. All right. Come back here, pull up that histogram, and it's pretty neutral and the same, right? Very cool. Well, I'd like to warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to go into Kelvin, right? And I'm going to bring it up. You can see we're getting warmer about 7,500, because I really want to bring out those warm tones in our owl. That was a little bit too warm. I think I'm going to live on 72. Now this is raw, so we're all good to go, right? Okay, let's go back to the screen and let's talk about focus. Here we go. So I chose immediately the single focus point and I do have animal detection on. So let's cycle through. Now I have my AF on button programmed with a custom function so as I can see exactly where my focus marks are going to be and I can cycle through them. And I'll show you that here in a, in a second. So all right, we're in the single focus point. I hit the AF on button and it goes to the five point donut. I hit it again, we go to a zone box, which I like a lot. And you can see it's not quite finding her face. I hit the AF on button again. Now this is the whole array, active focus, and see where it's focusing? Autofocus works off of still brightness, darkness, contrast, right? So if you understand that, you'll realize, oh wow, that branch has a highlight on it, 
and it's grabbing the light and the focus more than the owl in the background. So I cycle again to my single focus point, and boom, right on. Take a quick frame. Now let's hit review. Let it come up. And this is the actual still image. Let's pull up the info. There we go. Spot on. Let's pull up that review one more time. Let it come up. There we go. Here's the still image. All right. So let's check. Does that look a little bit warm? Possibly but all three values are equal in length. And by having all three values equal in length, and my exposure is just touching the right-hand side, I know I'm not blowing out my highlights and I know I'm not overexposing anything. So that's great. So I'm really good. So we could punch in, right, there we go. We'll move it around and we can see there she is. Beautiful little girl, right? Beautiful red morph. She's sleeping. She's fully aware that I am here. Her senses, her little, you know, we can't see her ears, these tufts mimic ears, but their ears are actually offset. It's kind of like a parabolic dish and they could vector in the sound. So she's well aware I'm here, but I'm, she's easily 50 to 70 yards away. I'm not intrusive on her and I'm not gonna go any closer than this because ultimately, the welfare of the wildlife supersedes any photograph I need to get. So always, always be respectful of the environment you're in. All right, so let's take a few photos here and we're gonna go with it, right? And then I'm gonna try and use the 2X converter. And with the 2X converter, we'll get in a little closer. We won't have to crop as much. She's not moving. And that's what I'm gonna use the electronic cable release so I don't introduce any motion. Even though we have image stabilization in the body, image stabilization in the lens. The more magnification we have with a 2X, this is then a 1200 millimeter lens, any slightest vibration is still gonna manifest itself in an imperfect image because the resolution of these cameras resolves the minutest flaw in there. So let's take a few frames and then we are gonna go to the 2X. Get a little creative on the composition. Now let's just see, for the heck of it, go to menu, and we are gonna change the crop. So because we have all these megapixels, 45 of them, I could crop in 1.6. Did that, look at that, right? So it just punched it. Now, different schools of thought say, why not just crop it? Why not just shoot it, right? Not sure which is better. I haven't found one way to be more higher quality than the other, either cropping in camera or cropping post. It's entirely up to you. Now, that branch is kind of driving me a little bonkers. So let's go vertical. And again, we're gonna pan over just a little bit and we'll recompose the shot. There we go. And you see how dark the image got once I went out to the sky? That's because I'm in an auto exposure. So we're essentially metering off of what I would like to say, 18% gray, those tree and the tones and all that. So why not just take that and we're gonna get the ISO, right? So we're gonna put this right on the owl, right on the tree, so to speak. We're gonna meter it. And we're gonna say, what ISO is the camera recommending? A thousand, not bad. So why not same light, same exposure, Let's lock that in. So I'm gonna get out of this screen. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna change this to a thousand on the ISO. So thereby, I'm not playing with my exposure post. And I could lift and stamp, do all those wonderful things, same light, same exposure. So I'm gonna get the focus mark right on our little girl, right? It kind of cleans up the composition. Here we go. Yeah. It's silent. There we go. Beautiful. Now let's go back to full frame. Remember, I was in a crop sensor. So we're going to go here and we're going to go back to full. And you'll see the difference. There we go. Now that's full. So I got to change my tilt a little bit, pan up. Get her in the lower third. Now, 
first time I came out here to find her, it was such a, such a challenge. I don't want so much white on top. I think I like my composition a little bit more here. Like, where is Walda? All right, so I'll get that focus mark right on her. Take a few frames. Oh, hit the center. There we go. Oh, she's turning her head. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. So, let's see what happens. I'm going to put the 2X on. Lock everything down so the lens doesn't flip or anything. I'm going to get my 2X out of my bag. Make sure the lens doesn't flip forward. Body's off. The Ninja, my mic pack, all this fun stuff. Got my 2X. And then we're going to put this on. and We'll have to rebalance the gimbal because now we have more weight on the back end. Digital cable release, electronic cable release, Canon. The remote, I'm going to plug this into the remote socket on the front of the R5. And this way here, I'm not going to introduce any motion. There we go. All right, I've added the 2X on. Effectively, we have a 1200 millimeter lens. We got our beautiful screech owl in there. You'll notice my aperture change from 5.6 to aperture 8. Double the extender, doubles the aperture of the lens. So this is an f4, so f4, 5.6, f8. Now that's wide open at f8. All right, so I'm still in aperture priority, but the minute I change my composition a little bit, I've locked in the manual ISO, so let's lock in the manual for the mode. So we're gonna get out of the aperture priority, go manual all the way. So there we go. All right, so because I'm gonna use, it's both the histogram, because I'm gonna use the electronic cable release, I'm not gonna introduce any motion. Now let's see what it looks like with stabilization off. Right, there's stabilization off. Every little touch on the camera is super magnified out at 1200 millimeters. So just by pressing the shutter, look at all that motion I'm introducing. I'm trying to squeeze it, trying to squeeze it. Wow, it's all over the place. Let's activate the IS. Boom, nice and steady. Wow, look at that. Now I'm still making it move a little bit, but if I grab my digital cable release or electronic cable release, no motion at all. I'm not touching that camera. So I could lower my shutter speed, keep my ISO kind of low, and we could take still photos. So let's just punch in on one. I'm gonna pull up the image, review it. There we go. And let's zoom in and see how we're doing. See if we've made any motion. And look at this, 1200 millimeters, sharp, 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 sharp. She's beautiful. Oh my goodness, beautiful. So we could crop that image that much. So now let's say counting clicks, right? And what I mean by that, if I go one, two, three clicks in my aperture in any direction, I could go one, two, three clicks on my ISO. So I don't have to think about my exposure. So let's say I want a little bit more depth than F8. So I go one stop in F11. The image got darker, okay? So instead of lowering my shutter speed, Remember, we got 1,200 millimeters out there. We want no shake at all. And I'm not over depending on the image stabilization. So let's go one, two, three, boom. We have same light, same exposure. So one stop more in aperture, one stop more in ISO. So I'm still a little bit center, center. Struggling on my composition here. I really think this is a vertical. So let's do that. Let's switch it up to a vertical shot. There we go. I'm going to turn off the histogram. Yes, 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 yes. Now, let's cycle through those focus markers again and see what's happening here. So if I hit my AF on, that's my donut of five. Here's my square. And I'm going to hit AF on again. Now, because it's more isolated, you can see all the focus marks are trying to find the owl but her tones really blend in, so it's really kind of struggling. So let's just help it a little bit and put it right on her face. And now I don't have to worry all about the focus. 
And now I'm going to go back to my cable release and shoot away. And I'm going to change up my composition a little bit, right? Get some good frames here. Move slightly to the right. And now take a couple more. We'll move that focus mark. Now, since she's not moving, I'm not moving, right? No wind or anything. Why not put it in manual? Manual focus. So I'm going to come over here, turn the AF off. Perhaps now I can't see it. So let's turn that lens, turn the AF to manual. There we go. Now I've got my focus assist on. You can see it's kind of like a crown. And when it's all green, you know we have focus. So make sure I get that right over her face. If I go too far, the indicators let me know. If I go past, they go the other way, right? See that? Makes it super easy to manually focus. So once I'm there, we can magnify it to confirm. So we'll magnify it, let it settle. I'm not touching it. That's just the wind causing that little bit of vibration. Remember that six time magnification on the 1200. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, if I actually take a frame, it'll zoom out. There we go. Same light, same exposure. Owl's not moving, I'm not moving. So let's just lock everything down. Awesomeness. Very cool. So I'm going to tilt up a little bit, change the composition. I've got some time here with her. So let's make the best of it. I'm trying to clean up the elements that are distracting. Oh, see, I got to lock it down. Give it a little bit of room to tighten up. I do not want to touch this lens at all with all that magnification. So bring the focus back down. Make sure I've not knocked anything. There we go. Grab the cable release. Oh, I like this composition. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes, thank you. This is such a gift to find her. This is my Zach. All right, one last thing before I go try and find the screech owls is what if we use the in-camera crop? So let's go menu, in-camera crop, and we are gonna go 1.6. Whoa, super magnification. So I'm gonna, again, recompose. Now, a little bit more. Oh, still not too much. Yeah, we're drifting a little bit. Because remember, it's just slight movement really puts it off because it's super magnification. Can't do the math right now because I'm concentrating on the moment. But uh, we're 12 times 1.6. So you do the math for now. I'll post it later what the actual effective focal length is. Now for sure I don't want to introduce any motion. Thankfully it's not windy. I've got nothing shaking my tripod. Yes, yes, yes. An electronic shutter, so there's no shutter motion at all. If we were in mechanical shutter, you still can have a little bit of motion from the opening and closing. Ah, oh, she's beautiful. Look at her moving. That's so wonderful. Let's turn off all the info. There we go. Good. Now, what's effectively happening with my Ninja is it's recording the HDMI out and it's recording video. So now I'm getting high quality video and I'm still taking stills. How cool is that? We get a little interruption in the video when the still picture is captured. All right, I'm gonna swing, get a little horizontal of this with the crop and then we're gonna leave her alone. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> I really messed up. There we go. Cop again. Good. Tight it up. Oh, she's still a little too centered. There we go. Get the 
focus right on her. Boy, you can see, let's bring that histogram up. You're gonna see it pushing to the right because the light's changed. So I'm gonna lower my ISO two clicks because you do not wanna lose any of the highlights. Oh, I think I just saw Daddy's free towel fly by. Let's get a couple frames. Beautiful. Now let's rotate. Get horizontal at this magnification here. Really nice. And that snow is so white on the outside. So again, we can lower that ISO. Boom, we want to keep the details in her. I don't want any highlights blown out. So what if we change that composition? I'm not a big fan of that stick crossing in the frame, but not much we could do. This is nature, this is wild. Oh look, did you notice? She turned her face toward the sun. She's absorbing the warmth. Wow, look at that. Nature is just amazing. Oh, did you see the frame get dark? Okay, the sun just ducked behind a cloud. All right, so let's bring that ISO back up a little bit. Just wanna to touch the right side. There we go. Letting things settle down a little bit. And now my electronic shutter, oh, here comes the sun again. So now we're just gonna lower that ISO again. There we go. Good, good, good. Now back up again. Now, this is where it becomes your personal taste and preference. You could go auto ISO because we blocked out all of the bright light. We're focused right on her. Whew. Covered a lot here. Here we go. Here's our setup. So I had to move the Ninja out of the hot shoe, came prepared with a clamp so that I could get my speed light transmitter. We got the 1200 millimeter lens recording the audio from the camera to the ninja and our flash is way out there in the woods trying to light the owl which is in this area here this is how the story goes it happened this way a year ago kicking around the east side of town just me solo Stage right, cappuccino in hand The princess of my fairy tale Had to find a way to be her man Some way, somehow I wanna be a cup of joe The first sip in the morning You get your going ritual And want me so from within Let me be a cup of joe The first sip in the morning Baby, take me as I am through your veins I'll be flowing